from the fig, we're doing uh, the Japanese style. And here, you can really see the start of one of the spurs. Um, this was the first pruning, and then the spur grew out. And that was the second pruning, and then the spur grew out. Here's the third. And over here is a new bud coming out horizontally. I mean, that's actually a, a tiny fig that will never develop, but you know, like a little bud will come out here and it will grow kind of like this. So. So you're always trying to look for that little eye to pop out on no, the outer part? No, I was just, no. I mean, no one's going to come out. I'm, right. I'm just saying that way. you want a bud coming out from here. Okay. You don't want a bud com coming out from here because it's up. You want the spur to continue to grow out horizontally okay. with each season. So you don't want a, an upright bud like this. We don't want that at all. We want one that came from below the previous shoot. So I see, see I selected this one that came from below to continue. See, it came from below. Mm -hmm. So it continues to spur out horizontally. They call this Japanese fig pruning. It works well, everybody likes it. It looks nice too. And you can have easy access to the, the fruits. We're gonna have to negotiate with the homeowner. So every year you gotta cut it. Every, yeah, these these vertical shoots are the fruiting wood, and every year that gets removed, and a new shoot comes up that makes the fruit. A new one gets selected. So we're about it's about time to start growing new shoots. Okay. So it's time to do the pruning. And I guess I want to tie this down, but I think this is probably about as far as the tree can grow. And this one is a just a three-dimensional version of it. <laughs> same technique, same pruning style, but not in two dimensions and three dimensions. Yeah. I like it though. Instead of like a grapevine, more like a tree. <laughs> how old is how old are these? This one. Um, I saw a fig tree in the woods and I grabbed the cutting in 2006. We planted it in 2007 and we converted it over to this style of pruning uh, three years ago when we did all when we did both fig trees. It's clever. I wonder how it got there. You think it used to be an old home? Yeah, yeah somebody it was a fig tree in somebody's yard and then they didn't cut the bushes right and it was was it pretty big? Yeah, it's pretty big, but it was completely overgrown. I saw one little fig shoot trying to get up over a bunch of just random bushes and I said, oh, that's a fig. Let, and I crawled back in there to see what it was and took the cutting. Huh, how about that? That's a good, it's actually a good place for it. One to shoot out? A spur, maybe. I need a lopper for that. Yeah, it's too thick. So you call this a brown turkey? Yeah, this is a brown turkey. Yeah. And the figs are a lot bigger uh, when you do this, this pruning style. They're more like the brown turkeys in the store from California. The other thing that affects the flavor and appearance of the fruit is the climate. Because my mom has one of these in Kentucky and hers look just exactly like, and it's a cutting from this tree, but hers looks exactly like the, the brown turkey fruit from California. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. The climate makes the fruit a little bit different. Same tree. It tastes better and bigger? Uh, I don't know if it tastes better, but it's just, just larger. It's bigger and it looks different, different color. Mm -hmm. Not sure that it really tastes that different. I guess I'll pay attention. <laughs> Figure that out. It sure looks like it's a different fig, though. Right, because the growth um, habit. I, think, I mean, the way the fruits. I think a lot of people do think that it's a different fig. But I think it's uh, it's where you grow it is what makes it seem good. It's a lot cooler in California on average. Mm -hmm. It's 
from the ocean, isn't it? Because uh, the ocean always stays cool. And they're farther north. California is quite a bit farther north than Florida. I think it's like the Southern California is as far north as the Carolinas. Hmm. Something like that. I don't like this. I don't know why this is growing in the middle. I, you're, just, you're not supposed to have like two close two to each other. Stems as close. That needs to get lopped off. You're in your hand workout. Yeah, I need a lopper on it. But do you want a little saw? I have a little hand saw. We'll get a lopper. Okay. I'll do what I can do with the hand pruner. There's more selections. A bunch of shoots come out, and then you have to select the the right new shoot to continue your spur. Um, and then as it's growing, really, you should cut these side branches off of your fruiting wood as it grows. You should try to concentrate the growth into one single stem that continues to make figs, new figs as it grows throughout the year. Because the ones on the sides, they're going to... Yeah, it just kind of robs. It never energy. makes any figs. It takes, wood, it takes energy to make the wood. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> These little cuttings are not the target crop. Right. If cuttings was your crop, then you would want a completely <laughs> different style of pruning. Yeah, you're right. Not to use. This is a fruit production style. Yeah, there's enough cuttings here to start a 10 acre orchard. That's true. You can plant some in the ground? I'll plant maybe like 100 or 200. I really don't sell that more than that in a year. Do you do yours in a mist? No, no. You I'm stick just, them in the I'm ground? I'm going to stick these in a well drained mixture, well drained soil mixture. Most of them will take. All of them will take. When the door. Excuse me, when they're dormant, mm -hmm. even a little thing like this. We'll take. Yeah, and see how it's starting to grow? Uh-huh. Just knock it off. Mm. Nah. Just play your lugs. It'll be fine. But yeah, you, I, you, I've taken fig summer cuttings and le le left the leaves on uh -huh. and put yeah. them under mist. They grow fine. Cool. And I've also taken, once the wood kind of hardens up in the summer, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll cut the succulent tip off of it and just do a cutting. Figs are easy to grow from cutting. That's why I don't charge much for them. True. That would be Robin. unnecessary. I think we're pretty much to the lopper point, right? Yeah. Let me grab a lopper. Yeah. Not hard to believe all this grows in one season, huh? It is. So, what's, what's the form of fertilizing a, a fig tree? I don't want to tie that down. I wonder if they're going to let me. What? What's that? We don't fertilize it. Not at all? Um, Just because the fertilizer from the grass is enough? Well, the dogs really. Oh, yeah, pee but and poop I, on it. I would... Um, would you recommend just someone just use mulch and... Yeah, I, I would recommend just mulching it. What about if it's a little baby fertilizer for a few uh, years? Yeah, the cuttings, I'll throw a little, literally a teaspoon of fertilizer in there. Um, I put a lot of charcoal in my soil mixes, so that really holds the fertilizer. And in most soils around here, figs don't need fertilizer. They have very fertile soil. So, so mulching some dead wood beside it, like some, like some wood cut up, would be... Like a slow release fertilizer, that's natural. Helps them fight the nematodes. Organic matter. And active decomposition. Helps too. Yeah, the microorganisms that decompose the wood. They kill the nematodes. They don't really kill them, I think. They encapsulate them, is what I read. 
and they immobilize the nematodes so they can't flow with the water. Oh, that's cool. And go from root to root to root, which is how they spread. So the roots with the moist, you know, consistently moist and fertile soil from all the active organisms, the active compost pile uh -huh. under it. So they say about 12 inches of mulch under the drip line of the fig. Mm -hmm. It's good in the southeast. Because um. nematodes, they love like sandy soils that have no organic matter in it. Yeah, because they can flow easily with the water. A nematode itself is so small that it can only move a three quarters of an inch in its whole life, but it flows with the flow of the water. Oh, well. So that's how they disperse through the soil. So by encapsulating them with that organic matter, the roots can outgrow the predation. The nematodes can't eat it fast enough. Good to know. All right. Look at that baby. So. I want to train this. Would you call this a Japanese style pruning? Yeah. And training? And then this is just your standard tree form? They're both Japanese style. Okay. It's just ones that. And if you look up Japanese fig pruning, you can find all kinds of information on the internet. But one is a, like if this was in a row, you might do something like this for a single row of trees. And this is if you had, a lar you know, wider rows. So you could have some secondary branching. But I would like to train this here. Um, I don't know if we're gonna be allowed to, but that's what I would like to do. What would be awesome if you could like make it even longer it keep growing that would be cool we're, well the, we're we can go this way this way kind of slows down we're out of room over there you can see, you see the banana leaves coming out what would be crazy if you could just bend it and have two one going this way and then one shooting this way real long we could but i don't that's, know if they'd like that that's their path though true yeah we'd have to do the limbo we're, we had to cut out the hedge to find more space true we're pretty planted here i like how it is You've worked really hard on it. Trying to get as much in here as we can. That's all about the edible landscape. And palm trees. We like palm trees. Yes. That's cabbage, isn't it? Yeah. Well, there's, there's some other palms in here. I like palm trees. Me too. They just have their, their, and their I look like, to them. I like these camellias. Nice. I like that magnolia. Yeah. I really like looking at the live oak and seeing the, the leaves and the the, fern, the ferns in it and the shape of it. They usually wait a few years until they make seeds again, right? What's that? Live oaks. What did you say? Uh, the seeds production, do they usually wait a few years to make seeds? I think, I, I think they might. So every few years? I always forget which one it is, the red oaks or the white oaks, but one of them makes seeds every year and another one makes seeds every two years. Yeah, because two years ago our Thank live oak made bunches of seeds. I think you might be right that it might be the live oaks, but I'd have to look it up, so don't quote me on it. But yeah, one's uh, annual. Uh, something to keep in mind if you're trying to feed pigs and turkeys, I guess. Yeah, they'll eat it up. Mm -hmm. And I love how their seeds just sprout right away. You don't have to cold dorm dormancy it. I think they just get enough here. They, they do, like literally the seeds fell and they started sprouting. Yeah. I, I really don't like the angle. See how this yeah. one's? I don't like that. I want it to be more. Pull back a little. I'm gonna ask them and see if we can put in a post here to to hold it. I'd really like this here, kind of parallel to the blackberry trellis. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to move this one down and over while it's still flexible. That would be great. Gives it a nice character, form to it. Because, you know, it, well, it just, that way there's kind of a path in between each tree. This bamboo is no longer holding it. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess so we did Perfect. Maybe we did everything for now. Thank you, John. Till next time.